Hi, I'm Roger Dooley. I've been writing and speaking about neuromarketing since 2005. Since then, there's one question I've been asked most. Whether I meet someone at a conference or sit next to them on an airplane, when I explain what I do, they often ask me, what is neuromarketing? My simplest definition is, neuromarketing is the application of neuroscience and cognitive science to marketing. If that short answer leaves you wanting more, here's my expanded definition. Neuromarketing is the application of neuroscience and cognitive science to marketing. This can include market research that tries to discover customer needs, motivations, and preferences that traditional methods like surveys and focus groups can't reveal. Neuromarketing can include the evaluation of specific advertising, marketing, packaging, content, and so on to more accurately understand how consumers react at the non-conscious level and can include applying the knowledge obtained from neuroscience and cognitive science research to make marketing more effective without testing specific ads or other materials. Consumer neuroscience is sometimes used as a synonym for neuromarketing. According to Gerald Zaltman of Harvard, 95% of our brain's decision-making processes are non-conscious. Traditional market research looks at the 5% while neuromarketing tries to understand the other 95%. Not everyone will agree with this rather broad definition. Some say, if it's not actual neuroscience, it's not neuromarketing. They prefer to use the term neuromarketing to narrowly include only the use of neuroscience tools to evaluate specific advertising, products, and so on. Early neuromarketing practitioners measured brain activity with tools like EEG and fMRI, for example. Of course, some still use those techniques today. This limited definition breaks down a bit, though, since today, many of the tools that are part of some consumer neuroscience studies, like facial coding, eye tracking, and implicit testing, are behavioral in nature. It's also common in consumer neuroscience space to measure biometric data like heart rate and galvanic skin response. None of these directly measure brain or neural activity. I include the application of cognitive science, which includes not just neuroscience, but also behavioral science, psychology, and other fields. I do this for one reason. Neuromarketers want to understand and predict the behavior of their customers, and drawing artificial lines between disciplines is not helpful. We can all agree that customers often can't or won't accurately describe their preferences or explain how they make decisions, and that as marketers, we need to understand their non-conscious thinking. We can achieve that understanding in many ways. We can get it through fMRI images, with a clever lab experiment, by analyzing real-world behavior data, or some combination of approaches. Limiting ourselves to a narrow group of technologies makes no sense. There are other definitions of neuromarketing, of course. Wikipedia's definition says one role of neuromarketing is manipulation of the real needs and wants of people to suit the needs and wants of marketing interests. I disagree completely with the idea that a goal of neuromarketers should be to manipulate their customers. Neuromarketing isn't inherently manipulative. Rather, it is about understanding people's real needs and wants. With that knowledge, marketers can develop better products and less wasteful advertising campaigns. Here's another challenge. One could say that all marketing is neuromarketing, since customer buying decisions, brand preferences, and so on are all happening in their brains. In my opinion, that's not a particularly useful way to look at neuromarketing. It's a lot like saying everything is chemistry, since all living and non-living things are made up of molecules. That may be true, but it's not particularly useful or helpful. So when we talk about neuromarketing, I exclude marketing efforts that don't specifically incorporate neuroscience or cognitive research, either through new tests or by using data from past work and academic studies. Here's your challenge. What do you think? What would you add to or subtract from my definitions? Leave a comment or stop by neurosciencemarketing.com and let me know. If you've gotten this far, please take a moment to tap that like button. And if you find my stuff interesting, please subscribe too. In the meantime, stay brainy.